whether you sing, you dance, you play any instrument in any music style, you have to decipher a minimum of the information that the music gives you. So you have to listen, of course, but just listening remains a bit vague because sometimes we listen to music and we just perceive it as an indistinct stream of sounds and rhythm and textures all together, but we don't precisely know what we should be listening to, what exactly we should be looking for. And the problem when you haven't studied music but still want to understand how it works is that you immediately come across very scary technical terms like scales, modes, tonality, harmony, cadence, major, minor, blah blah blah. And suddenly you say, yeah, okay, but no, you know, actually it's too complicated. I just want to dance, to play, to sing, and I don't really need it anyway. Three important things here. You definitely need it. I mean, if you really want to understand how it works, but you don't need the scary theory. It's not that hard to understand and actually it is very easy. And it's easy because in fact everything is already within you. Hi, this is Guillermo Guillen for Flamenco Maps. Welcome to my channel. Whatever you dance, you play, you sing, there are at least a few little things that you need to understand about how music works. That's why I want to give you listening guidance to better understand and better feel the music you hear. I want to train your ear and your brain to identify things that are happening in the music. And these things, once understood and internalized, will allow us to dance better, sing better and play better. And they will also allow us to reconnect with emotions, sensations, feelings, but in an improved way. We'll talk about what is a harmonic context and what is a cadence. But don't be afraid of the words, okay? I'm going to explain this to you in a very simple way without entering music theory. And I'm sure that eventually it will become crystal clear. More specifically in your flamenco practice, trust me, it will help you with so many things. Like identify the palos and the styles, really feel the compass, anticipate the caidas, the end of the melodic lines of the cante or the guitar. And also better understand flamenco structures. A group of tercios, a repetition of part of the letra, a remate de guitarra, a rueda de escobilla, because everything is connected. The harmonic language of the guitar is intimately linked to the melodic lines of the cante, to the rhythm, to the compass, and to the structure of a baile. Everything goes together in a global movement. This video may be a little long, but it will lay very solid foundations for this essential work. There is a lot to cover and we are starting at the beginning. So just relax, take your time, make yourself a coffee or go for a walk and listen to this at your own pace. The functioning of music is neither random nor completely arbitrary. It is based mainly on two things. First perception and cognitive processes. We hear something and our brain tells us, oh yeah, it sounds good, it feels good, it makes sense, it works. It's not just noise, it's music. From there, the logic, the system, the structure, the rules of composition of music, or even painting for that matter, have developed. From the way we perceive the world, from the tools we use to perceive the world, our eyes, our ears, and the second thing is the culture. There is a cultural selection. Each culture, depending on the era and the place in the world, has selected different options. But all of them are based on the human perception of sounds. That's why we can listen to and appreciate music from all over the world, even if we don't understand it. You can be moved by Indian music or Inuit music or Pygmy music, Peruvian music, music from ancient Greece or European Middle Age, because they connect to something that we all have, something that is globally and deeply human. As in any other music style, the elements of flamenco music have been selected by human ears and human brains at a specific place, at a specific time, in a specific culture, and it continues to evolve today. What I mean by that is that since we are all human, I guess. We are all equipped the same way, we all have the same tools, ears and eyes and brains. 
I guess. So if we trust our eyes, our ears, our brain, our body, our sensations, then we can easily connect with music in a more physical, a more perceptual way because we already have everything in us. And if you see things that way, they stop being so mysterious, so incomprehensible, so external. Everything comes back inside us. We search for answers inside us. We reconnect with perceptions and emotions in a very intuitive and spontaneous way. So let me grab my guitar and vamos. In the first video, the colors of music, I put the link somewhere or in the description, I already explained that each single note has a specific sound, a specific color, like this one. And when we mix a minimum of three notes together, we create a note blend, what we call chords, like this. If you haven't watched that first video yet, now it's a good time. What is fundamental to understand is that everything depends on a context. A chord is a context for each one of the notes it contains. The same note, depending on what other note it is mixed with, produces a different chord, a different color blend with a different feeling. So try to spot this note separately in each different chord, but also feel that the blend itself has its own color, its own vibration. contexts are very different for the same note, right? Let's take a chord now, like this. It has its own color, its own personality, its own identity. So in a song or in a cante or in any music piece, we usually don't have just one chord because it would be monotonous, which by the way means one single color. We use more chords, so one chord belongs to a larger context. I told you I don't want to talk about music theory, I don't want to talk about scales, about keys, about tonality, any of that. So I'm going to talk about harmonic contexts. A harmonic context is like a palette of color blends with which we can paint an infinity of soundscapes. On each palette we have a set of different chords or different colors, but they all have in common that they belong to the same palette. So we had this chord, and now let's see how it feels like when we put it in a context. We can always spot it, right? It was the first one of the three chords I played, but we can already feel that the other chords condition the way we perceive the first one. We can already feel movement, dynamics. And now we keep this chord, but we change the context. Now it was in second position, but you could still spot it, right? It feels very different in this context. So the first context again. And the second one. And let's try another one. So here it's the same chord, but it comes in third, last position. And again, it feels very different. My goal here is simply to make you understand and feel that there are different harmonic contexts that sometimes use the same raw material, the same colors. So listen to the three different contexts again, but try to keep this chord in mind and spot it each time.
depending on the context, everything sounds very different because the interaction between the different chords create different dynamics. Without going into details, all this corresponds to a very complex and organized system called tonal harmony or functional harmony on which is based the vast majority of Western music. Classical music, pop music, or a big part of jazz. In flamenco, we use three different palettes, three different harmonic contexts. And with these three different contexts, we cover all the flamenco palos and styles. But we'll talk about that in detail in the next episode. In each palette, each chord has a certain relationship with the whole palette and also individually with each one of the different chords. There are affinities, attractions, collaborations, but also repulsions, conflicts, battle for power. It's very rich, but the short version, what we need to know, what we need to understand is that as so many things in music and in life, it's all about tension and now you understand that this idea of harmonic context is not about one chord, it's about the whole thing. Maybe you are going to ask me, so if we want to recognize the different harmonic context, we need to recognize all the possible different chords and all the possible combinations. Luckily, no, there is a much faster, easier way. We'll spot the musical tensions and resolutions because it's something that we can easily physically feel we can hear them and feel them if i do this happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday to you if i stop here you can feel the tension right everything in you your whole body wants the resolution you Simple, right? The basic harmonic tension resolution mechanism is called a cadence. Imagine one of those automatic doors that want to close on their own because there is a door closer on them. The door is stable when closed. As soon as you open the door, you create a tension and the door only wants one thing, to get back to its stability, to be closed. The door closer is the mechanism that forces the door to move until it is closed. The cadence is the mechanism that resolves the harmonic tension. And like a door that has essentially two possible states, open or closed, a cadence has two basic chords, the opening chord and the closing chord. Of course, we can use many more chords, like for example, the Andalusian cadence. The complete Andalusian cadence has four chords, four steps. But we already said that we can use only the two last chords, the two last steps. They are enough to create the main dynamic. We also often use the question answer image. Music is made of this mechanism tension resolution all the time, everywhere. Here we are talking about harmony, but it also happens rhythmically or melodically or even with the lyrics. Create expectation, curiosity, what will happen next. For each harmonic context, there is a main cadence that makes you feel stable, feel at home. You can feel it, right? The whole song or cante or music piece could just finish with this. We don't need anything else after that. And there are also secondary cadences, perhaps less obvious, but they obey to the same mechanism, just in a larger cycle. Sometimes the cadences are kind of 
hidden or just more subtle because we don't want to play the chords in blocks like every time. So we can release them drop by drop, note by note in a more melodic way. But the movement is the same, tension, resolution, opening, closing, question, answer. This main, clear, obvious cadence expresses the essence of a specific harmonic context. But even before trying to identify the specific harmonic context, which we'll do in the next episode, it is fundamental to feel this movement first. And now that you understand the main principle, you just need to train your ears and your brain to spot the cadences. This way you'll begin to perceive, to feel and to visualize the music as a movement with waves instead of a continuous flow. So chase the cadences, spot them, feel them and get used to them. And this little by little will become an intuition, but a trained intuition. When you hear this... It's good, it's clear, it's over, the door is closed. It was very important to understand certain things, but now we know them, okay? So it's good, we can let go and feel. It is very important to reconnect with simple sensations directly linked to pure perception. It's much more effective than always thinking, deducing or analyzing. For now, whatever music you are listening to, I'm just asking you to pay attention to this movement, to this tension resolution, without trying to find out what kind of harmonic context it is. We are going step by step, okay? So whether you are listening to a Solea, an Alegria, a Bob Marley song, a Symphony of Beethoven, or a Mexican ranchera, just try to feel this. Cadences are everywhere in almost all the music you hear, unless you are a big Arnold Schoenberg fan, for example. In this case, difficult. So do this and please let me know in the comments how it goes. Are you able to feel them, to spot them? Don't miss the next videos of this series because we'll explore different ways to identify the different harmonic context we use in flamenco. We're going to practice a lot to do a lot of ear training so that you can really feel them and identify them like this instantly without even thinking. I hope it could help. Thank you so much for watching. If it helped, you can also help me by liking this video, sharing it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and also go and visit flamencomaps.com. There I explain my classes, my courses, my way of teaching flamenco. I see you there. Till then, don't forget, listen to music and chase the cadence.